Hi, everybody. I'm back. Back from Venice Carnival with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Uh, I'm giving AI a rest for the time being, and today I'm looking at one of my captures from our latest Venice Carnival photo adventure. I'm going to do a complete step-by-step -step image enhancement with an underexposed image. And we'll see how ISO equivalence works with newer RAW files. And, and we'll not only rescue the image, we'll enhance it into a winning shot. All right, here we go. OK, so here we are in Lightroom. And uh, here is my seriously underexposed shot. Now, um, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll admit that this was kind of a mistake to photograph at this uh, this, this far underexposed. I had flash on camera. This was very early in the morning. Uh, and um, there was kind of a feeding frenzy, frenzy going on with this particular costume. It was a spectacular costume. And I wanted to get uh, far enough away to see the scene. But um, there were people sort of jumping in front. I was very rushed. And I got this shot off before I realized that I'd shot it at ISO 125. Uh, my shutter speed was okay. It's about a 60th of a second. But the ambient exposure is way down. Now, one of the reasons this happened is that um, when you are using a mirrorless camera and you're shooting with flash, you have to turn off preview exposure and white balance um, so that you can actually see something <laughs> in order to photograph it. So what it does is it turns the the preview off so that you're you're looking at a well-lit scene whether or not the exposure is correct or not because the flash is going to expose your subject right so in order to see properly so that you can focus you have to turn off your preview because otherwise it's underexposed so in this case my preview was off i, I didn't realize that the ambient environment was so dark because i couldn't tell in the viewfinder uh, that it was this dark um, however, um, I did get a, a decent shot here, and even though my ISO is at 125, um, we could have pushed the ISO uh, ahead of time before the capture to like 800 or something like that. I would have gotten plenty of uh, exposure in, in the background. But because our newer RAW files are so good, uh, there's so much information in these shadows, it's going to be pretty easy to, to open this up. I'd like to add at this point that uh, with with these new digital cameras, there's this, there's this concept of ISO equivalency. And what that means is that if, when you push the ISO, ISO, when you go to a higher ISO, it's pretty much like boosting your exposure in post. I mean, it's almost identical, actually. So um, just by taking the ISO to like 800, it's sort of like going into Lightroom and increasing the exposure like two times, two or three times. Okay, so um, you never have to be afraid of cranking the exposure in post because it basically replicates what you would have done if you had just opened up your ISO to a, a higher ISO. Okay, and it, as we can find, you'll see in this uh, in this example, uh, once we open it up quite a bit, we open up the exposure quite a bit. There isn't even any noise in the file. It's it's so good. So I'll start just by you know opening the exposure just so I can kind of see what I've got going on. I notice that the the mask is very bright, and so it's starting to to get too bright. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the sh the highlights down. And then, in fact, I'll go all the way like that. And then we'll just open up the exposure even more. And I'll just stop when that mask gets too hot. Now, I could turn on the highlight clipping indicator, right? And then just open it up until it, I got that little red flashy thing. But, but this is just too far. It's too far. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and leave it about like that. And now... I can see enough of the image and I realize that my um, I had a grid spot on my flash. And so um, the flash is really just illuminating this part of the, the picture. 
and uh, I want to open up everything. And I also I want to separate her more from the background uh, and and apply some sharpening and you know just kind of saturate up the the costume a bit. So that suggests that I should uh, make a mask. So we'll go into the mask panel here. And I'm going to go ahead and select subject. Let's see if it does a good job here. And uh, not bad. Okay, so automatically isolated the subject there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, we'll start by giving this some clarity, which will kind of pop the details. So I'm going to go ahead and push the clarity up all the way. Um, these kinds of costumes uh, have a lot of high frequency detail. So the texture slider will really have a big effect. Uh, and you can kind of see I'm starting to just clip that one little highlight, that little red highlight. And that's as far open as I want to go. Um, we can also enhance the feeling of contrast using the dehaze slider. So I'm looking for these blacks to kind of pop in now. So I'm going to pump the dehaze up just a little bit. It kind of moves in two directions. It gives me a little, a little more highlight strength, but it's, it's deepening the shadows. Um, let me back up. Okay, kind of cool. Let's see if we can... Uh, amp the saturation a little bit. And maybe we'll push the color temperature towards yellow just to a little, warm it up just a little bit. Yeah, so now I've really got that golden thing going. Now, um, to, to help separate her more from the background, I'm going to make the background cooler. So I've made her warmer, push the color temperature over to the yellow just a little bit. Let's do the same for the background. We're going to make it cooler. So what I'm going to do is go over to the mask panel here. And in my little three dots here, I get those options. I'm going to duplicate and invert the mask. So I will now be selecting just the background. Then all I want to do is just cool it off. So I'm going to move it just a little bit to cool it off. So now we really have more color contrast and uh, we've sort of separated that person from the background. I'm going to open up the shadows just a little bit and that will flatten the contrast in the background just a little bit. And also give us a, more of a sense of that environment. Maybe open exposure just a hair. And now the thing that, that's bothering me a little bit is, is I'm, I'm not square to her, so I'm kind of shooting at an angle. I'd like to see if I can square this off. In other words, correct for the perspective, the off angle that I have here. Um, and so let's, let's, let's go ahead and do that. I'll close the mask panel for now. And I'm going to go over here to the transform uh, panel. And this kind of correction, I think I can do it by just simply clicking on the, the, the full upright. This is the upright automatic um, perspective correction. And if I just click on full, let's see what it does. Yep. So now it's, it's squared off. It's made the, the, the verticals more vertical, the horizontals more horizontal. And I can crop this now just to get this to fit inside the correction area and let's do this okay kind of like to get her sort of in the closer to the one-third mark here uh, but I still want to preserve that column so this is what I got and uh, let me open that up just a little bit I want to make sure I get this row of little architectural detail up there Okay. All right. So uh, it's starting to look pretty good. Um, let's do one more thing. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, maybe if I just soften that back just a little bit more um, and we can try a lens blur to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on apply and it sort of automatically figures out what the depth 
map is. You can kind of visualize the depth, but just by checking this little visualize depth check mark, and I can now see this is the the depth map. And it looks like it's really identified that portion as the stuff that's in the background. So that's good. Uh, but I'm a little too blurred here. So I'm going to bring this back, you know, maybe maybe 20 or so. I think that's, that's probably pretty good. And uh, if I turn the eye on or off, you can kind of see there's the sharp background and a slight blur background. It helps to separate the figure. Let's take a look. Yeah, she's really popping out and definitely separating from the background. I've got a little issue here. So we got to we got to edit this part. So I'm going to refine the depth and I'm going to brush in focus right so i click on focus and now i've got a, a a brush size i'm going to reduce the feather of that brush reduce the size of that brush because what i want to do is bring this back into focus here so i'm gonna just sort of paint that it's kind of like this little wand that she's carrying right so we'll make sure that we get that wand in there and if i hold down the Option or Alt, I can subtract. So sometimes I find it's easier to just kind of paint a wide stroke and then trim it down by subtracting. And okay, so now let's uncheck that, take a look and see if we brought back the focus the way we want. Yes. Right, so we are just brush in a little more focus in here some of these outside areas make it make it look a little bit like maybe she's been moving it all right well that should do it um let's go ahead and back out very dramatic shot and uh it gives you a sort of an idea of, of how much you can recover. Let's take a look at that again. I'm going to zoom in to 200%. And we'll check. And we actually don't even have any noise. I mean, this is at 200%. Um, could be a little sharper. Let's see if I can make that a little sharper. I'll go back to this. I think we've, we've cranked the... Uh, the texture up quite a bit. Let me see if I take it up all the way. That should help just a little bit. Maybe, uh, maybe we can add a little detail. A little extra sharpening. But I think for a hundred percent, that's pretty sharp. And then in the context of the whole image, I think that's sharp enough. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own post-processing work in Lightroom. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. All right, bye-bye for now. See you next time.